thank you very much and welcome to our booth. Our company, MyPV, is a manufacturing company. We are from Austria, so we are not a German company. But we are not far away from Munich. It's approximately a drive of uh, three hours. And we are located in Upper Austria. Uh, our business is power to heat. We are making hot water from photovoltaics. And when you're thinking about hot water from, from uh, sun's power, maybe you think about solar thermal systems, collector systems. So systems with a, a pipe, systems with a pump, with anti-freezing liquid, with expansion vessels, and all that stuff, and, and pipes and insulation. And when we uh, think about, or when we talk about uh, hot water from the sun, we are talking about photovoltaic hot water heating. So we use cables instead of pipes. And in doing so, we make the system many times easier. And since a few years, we also make it cheaper than a conventional solar thermal system. So the whole story of my PV uh, beg began with this invention here. It is the ELVA. ELVA is um, the letters mean electric water heater. And the product with the gray cover here is the only DC product that we have so far, but one of the most successful products and solutions that we have invented. The story began in uh, 2014. And when we invented the ELVA in 2014, the solution was definitely ahead of its time. Because people were familiar to solar thermal systems and they could not understand how to use um, very um, yeah, efficient PV power, very uh, costly PV power for heating. But nowadays um, PV panels have become so cheap that we also can create uh, hot water with the power from the PV system. And as I mentioned, we do it many times easier. Uh, by using wires instead of pipes, you do not have all this equipment required and you do not have the problems with the anti-freezing liquid and the stagnation in the summer and the maintenance effort is hardly, hardly nothing, practically nothing. So this is the DC solution. We have a direct connection uh, of uh, four to eight panels to our heater. There's an MPP tracker integrated and a linear power control unit from zero to 2000 watts to ensure that exactly the amount of power from the panel is used for hot water heating. So it's not an on-off system, it's a smart immersion heater with an MPP tracker inside. Uh, the MPP tracker normally is in the inverter of the PV system. So here we have the MPP tracker in our solution. And this is the DC solution. Uh, from 2015 forward, we have invented a few AC solutions. So here we are in on-grid systems, in grid-connected systems, and the purpose for these solutions is to use just the excessive energy. So the energy that usually would be sent back to the power grid is used. In doing so, we can be a cheap alternative to battery storage systems. But that does not mean that we compete with battery systems. We can also be um, a relatively cheap um, add-on to battery systems. And when we combine both technologies, uh, we are talking about hybrid storage. So you have your PV system on the roof. This PV system supplies your electric appliances if the building. Afterwards, the battery is uh, charged and in um, and in a, in a uh, summer day, sometimes in the early morning, around or in the late morning, around uh, 11 a.m., for example, the battery reaches the state of full charge. And from this point forward, we have uh, the remaining excessive power available for hot water heating. In doing so, we increase the PV self-consumption to a maximum at very low investment compared to additional storage capacities of batteries. And then we have the the green product here, so we just uh, changed the color because the dimensions of the product are exactly the same as for the DC solution. So this is a fully integrated solution. The linear power control, which is our know-how from MyPV, is combined with the immersion heater, which is inside the hot water boiler. This is uh, a big advantage because it's a fully integrated solution. In some cases, this can also be a disadvantage because, for example, there can already be an immersion heater, which should be uh, used also in the future. And in this situation, we have the actor power controller. 
This is our latest product family. And when people look at the actor, they think it's a smart home system. The, the display reminds them of a smart home or home automation system, but actually it's not. Technically speaking, the actor is an AC power controller. What can it do? It makes a standard immersion heater PV ready. That means we make the standard immersion heater, uh, we supply it linearly with power. And here every single power uh, step from zero to 3000 watts is possible. Every watt is possible. Here we have an animation on this uh, unit. For example, just a number, 4758 watts. And this is the amount of excessive power that can be used for hot water heating. This excessive power changes all the time. Your PV production changes on the roof. You switch on and off your electric appliances in the building. And the balance in the feed-in point, how much excess power is available, changes permanently. We meter in the feed-in point with our power meter how much excessive power is available. It detects it on all three phases. And via Ethernet, the power meter sends the excessive power info to the actor power manager. And then the actor sets its power uh, accordingly to the measured value to, uh, and it sets the power of the immersion heater here to avoid feed-in into the power grid and to imp avoid import from the power grid. So this balance in the feed-in point is zero. And this calculation and this control is done very fast and very accurate, so one time a second. And this uh, can be done until hot water heating is done. And last year, we uh, presented the actor. Uh, it has a, a normal standard uh, European socket. It's also available with other sockets, for example, for Switzerland, where a resistive load can be connected. And in the connection between the resistive load and the actor, you make this load PV ready. It's linear power controlled. And this actor, as I mentioned, is a linear power controlled from 0 to 3000 watts. And our latest invention of the product family is the actor 9S. This is the same case, the same size, same display. Uh, the uh, difference is that it is a three-phase system and it has a linear power control uh, from 0 to 9000 watts. It is still everything plug and play here. And one of the biggest advantages is that every single phase of the Actor 9S is, can be controlled linearly. So this is just one of the many unique sales points of the Actor. Another one is the size. It's very compact. Another one is the display, which uh, enables uh, the control or the, the adjustment of the device very easily and very intuitive. Um, we have flexible control. That means if uh, um, a signal source from a compatible manufacturer is available, we can use the excessive power information from this manufacturer. This can be an inverter manufacturer, this can be a smart home manufacturer or a battery manufacturer. If uh, such a compatible signal source is not available, then we do the metering our own with our own power meter. Yeah. Uh, what else? Here we can connect any resistive load that you want. So it, it's not necessary that it is an, an immersion heater for hot water heating. It can also be an electric heating mat for space heating or an infrared panel. As long as it is, is, as it is a pure resistive load, uh, we can uh, do the linear power control here. And in doing so, we can replace the whole conventional uh, space heating system uh, with our technology. But this is just recommended for very new buildings with a very low uh, with a very low demand of space heating energy. So for new buildings and for um, renovated buildings or thermally uh, renovated buildings with very low space heating energy demand, this can be a solution. Because from our point of view for these new buildings, a conventional water-based space heating system is, is an overkill. Yeah, let's say it this way. Uh, as an alternative to this uh, water-based space heating systems, we can take the money that we usually spend on the boiler room in the basement and uh, invest in a bigger PV system and then we replace all the water-based um, space heating with wires instead of pipes, with an electric heating mat in the, in the floor, for example. So for existing building, hot water heating is always um, 
a good chance to increase your self-consumption consumption ratio and we do this for many years now and for newer buildings that are built according to uh, today's building standards uh, this is also an opportunity to replace the space heating system. Okay, I think this was a rough overview from my PV. And thank you very much for your visit. Um, Power to Heat, I think it's um, the only booth where you are informed on this topic. Uh, it's a relatively young topic, um, but the interest is, is growing and it gets bigger and bigger. And hopefully uh, you agree on that and come back to our booth later. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was a very nice uh, um, talk. We learned a lot, I think. Uh, does anybody have a question? Hi. Um, would it dovetail into AC applications as well, air conditioning? Um, the kind of the load has to be a pure resistive load. So that means an, an ohmic load. If there is an electric motor in this load, like um, uh, an air conditioning system uh, or a, a vacuum cleaner, it, it will not work. So it has to be a pure electric heating load. Um, yeah, what one feature of the actor is, is that we can also combine it for, with um, heat pumps, for example. And uh, in doing so, it works uh, from a certain level of excessive energy. Uh, the actor switches off and releases the heat pump because then you uh, use this coefficient of performance of the heat pump, for example. And in this, uh, yeah, in this uh, parts of the of the excessive uh, energy, where just low excessive energy is available, the actor will do the uh, the energy management. So this combination is possible, but you cannot uh, connect any uh, load you want to the actor. It would not make sense to connect your PV or whatever to the actor. The question here is: You actually told that the power meter. Sorry? The power meter yeah. can transmit the excess power through the power manager through the Ethernet port, yes. which means that is the power is transmitted on a network line. On a what? Network line. Yes, exactly. Oh, yes. Uh, the communication between the units uh, is made via Ethernet. Yeah, we are a local area network. So both units are connected to the router of the building. Uh, what is also possible is to connect them directly when there is no network. Also with a patch cable, it has to be a crossover patch cable, a so-called crossover patch cable, but also for buildings where no network is available, this can be a solution. And the power meter can give the excessive power signal either to the extra PV power manager or to the green ACLVE. Uh, the product is compatible to both uh, systems. So it can measure the power and also transmit the power. Hello. So you're saying it can measure the power and also transmit the power, both functions? Exactly. It, it does the measuring here and gives the information of the excessive amount to the power manager. Does the power meter work in AC? Yes, it's, it's an AC system. So we have three phases uh, and all, on all three phases so the, the direction of the load is detected. And once it detects feed-in into the power grid, uh, it gives the actor the uh, the information that it has to scale up its power to avoid feed-in. No, no, I, I, I think there was a misunderstanding there. Okay. I, he was asking, can the Ethernet transmit the power? Yes. Ah, no, 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 no. No, just the information, the information. not the power itself, of yeah, course. I understood. <laughs> no, I'm sorry if there was a misunderstanding. Just the information is transferred via Ethernet, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, if, if we have an invention here, uh, yeah, we will definitely win the Intersolar Award next year. <laughs> and, and a few other awards. <laughs> okay, then thanks a lot.